Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I suppose we will be installing Windows XP on this and then doing some benchmarks and then probably playing some games as well. So first off, it would probably be advantageous to once more go over the basics of this machine. Um, and we already did this in an earlier video, but I'll do it again just for completeness sake. Um, so on the front here we have a CD drive, a ZIP100 drive, a floppy drive, and then under this flap we have uh, two USB ports, headphone and microphone jacks. And then around back we have a game port, a serial port, PS2 connectors, VGA parallel, um, headphone, line-in, and microphone, uh, twisted pair, ethernet, I believe this is 10100, two USB ports, and two, uh, PCI slots. Now, this computer doesn't have a hard drive installed already, so I'm going to be installing this Western Digital 64GB drive. It's a Western Digital Caviar. It was made in March of 1999. Uh, and hopefully it works, so to get the cover off, should just slide forward and now we have access to all the internals. Um, and this has a 2.4 gigahertz Pentium 4 in it, um, one gigabyte of RAM, and it is based on the SIS615 chipset, which has um, the SIS315 as its graphics core for the integrated graphics. Um, and I will leave a link in the video description for um, a video from the YouTuber Pixel Pipes that goes over the performance of the uh, PCI, I think, unless it's AGP. Uh, I know this isn't uses an internal AGP bus, but, um, um, that video goes over the, um, like, the add-in card version. This just has it as part of the integrated graphics, um, and yeah, um, I'll have that linked in the description. It's a very good video. Okay, so I have it open um, and actually this is nice, because um, this means it'll be super easy to replace the CMOS battery, which I know for a fact is dead. Now, wait, let's just make sure that everything is wired up correctly. In my explorations, I've never seen the zip drive show up um, under the BIOS, which means it, could, it may just not be bootable, or it may not be detected. The latter of which likely means that there's a jumper issue, but anyway, let's just go ahead and slot this drive in. I don't have screws, but um, hopefully that won't be too big of an issue in this case. Oh, this will be a very snug fit even without the screws, so hopefully that will be fine. And yeah, um, this is actually a really neat modular, um, or not modular, but it's a really neat design. I quite like it. Let's see. Now the challenge is to just get everything back together. And so now, the moment you've probably all been waiting for, actually powering up the system. A bit helpful. So I don't actually need to change any of this stuff, but I will, or much of this stuff anyway, but I will Windows XP, which I have the installer for right here, um, is a plug and play OS. Insert the disk into the drive.
and I'm going to save settings as an exit. And now we should. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Right in the window setup. <laughs> And actually, it occurs to me, um, I probably actually installed Windows XP relatively few times for a tech channel. But also, it occurs to me that I don't actually do much with Windows, or, and really PCs in general. Like, if you look at most of my content, it's about Macs, and then my Sun Ultra 5. Um, and when I do deal with PCs, it's oftentimes, like, Linux. So, um... So, like, taking out, like... Like, when looking at just, like, instances of Windows X Windows being installed... I've installed Windows XP twice. <laughs> Windows 7 once. Um... And I feel like that may be it. Oh, and... Yeah, I don't think Windows Vista was a video. Windows NT4 on my compact was not a video. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it is pretty funny when you think about, like, Windows XP is still, like, the most installed operating, like, Windows version on my channel, even though I don't even particularly like XP. <laughs> like, it's just, like, era-appropriate for so many machines. And I think that's why it's, like, so prevalent, is because it has, like, it stayed around for so long. Um, similar to like Core 2 Duo machines that can like probably run most things between like Windows 2000 and Windows 10. And I'm pretty sure people have hacked Windows 11 on there. So yeah, um, yeah, it's just interesting um, to think about Windows XP Home Edition setup. And I normally install Windows XP Professional, but I generally, um, uh, but also, like, I wanted to do this, like, as, uh, true to the, like, the idea of this being a home system as possible, so home systems would likely have XP Home on them, not XP Professional. Let's see, format with NTFS, um, we can do it quick. And yeah, um, yeah, it actually feels good to like be installing an older version of Windows again because I really don't, I really haven't gotten the chance to do much with old systems since coming to college uh, because I left most of my computers at home. So just being able to do this is really fun. Um, like I'm really happy <laughs> that I was able to do this. Um, and yeah, so this will install. Um, I will come back when there is something to look at. <laughs> so the computer just restarted. Um, and I will not um, boot from CD because now we'll boot into Windows XP setup, the graphical portion. Um, let's see, I'm just going to grab this from my Mac Mini. And this will be useful when I need to set the time, and then also later. Um, this is network cable running from my ThinkPad P53. Um, and, yeah. So, yeah. And I will, um, yeah, I'll be back. Uh, Windows XP Home Edition sports a visual design that can combine sleek look, clean lines, and appealing colors with task-oriented design and Oh, it's gone. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll be back. Okay, so it just finished up installing, um, and now is the moment of truth for the for the Windows XP Rite of Passage. See if title.wma plays. <laughs> see, it's gonna reboot. Oh yeah, yeah. The zip drive is detected, so that's nice.
but yeah. <laughs> First boot, let's see if title.wm plays. If it is, I will actually be very happy and very excited because this is like, yeah, title.wma is something that like is famous for like almost never playing with Windows XP installations because the audio driver is not present. There's supposed to be audio there. No! There are no audio drivers, no! Damn. I was really hoping that we would, um, uh, get audio drivers. Um. But I guess not. But yeah, so Windows XP out of box experience. I'm gonna go through the out of box experience and stuff, and then I'll be back when I'm finished and we boot to the desktop. Okay, so we have made it to the desktop, and yeah, as always, this is what a new installation of XP looks like. Uh, let's see. Let's just get rid of that. <laughs> um, so let's just see what the um let's see. Let's try twelve ten twenty-four by seven sixty-eight. Oh wait, is this using some sort of like generic video driver? It might be. Which is actually a good segue into the next um thing that I need to do. <laughs> um device manager. Yeah. So it apparently doesn't have sound or video drivers. It does have the Zip 100 driver, so that's nice. I am going to install Legacy Update, which, for those of you who don't know, is a system update utility <laughs> um, for old versions of Windows from Windows 2000 onward. And this will allow me to receive updated... Up, it will basically allow me to receive updates for Windows XP. This is a great tool. I have used it on... Um, let's see. I know for a fact I've used it on Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 8.1. Um, I installed Windows 7 on my... Um, ThinkPad X61 as before this was a thing, or at, least, at the very least before I knew about it, but I think before this was a thing. So I installed, um, so I didn't install it on there, but um, if I were to install Windows 7 again, then I would install it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm just gonna let this do its thing. And I'll be back when something interesting happens. So here's the title of the WMA file that um, I was hoping we would hear when we first had the computer, but we're hearing it now. Um, and as you can see, we have sound drivers and video drivers installed. Um, and I wanted to like do some benchmarks, do some game testing, but Unfortunately, I'm a little dumb, and keeping with the stereotype that gay people can't do math, I thought this was a 64 gigabyte drive. It's a 6.4 gigabyte drive. <laughs> so, um, yeah, basically after updates and everything, I'm out of space on this drive. <laughs> um, but. Not all is lost, because um, I do have some stuff I can run off of 
flash drive. But first, uh, let's get a good look at the CPU, because now I can actually use um, CPU-Z. And, um, yeah, this is basically what you would expect from something of this time period. Let's see. I should be able to get magnifier up. Anyway, um, so yeah, Intel Pentium 4, Northwood. Um, yeah, it's a 2.4 gigahertz, supporting MMX, SSE, and SSE 2. And yeah, so that's pretty, yeah, that's the pretty basic information. Um, but so, yeah. And like I said, there are some things that can be run from a flash drive, like, um, Movie Maker, uh, and while I don't have any, um, videos prepared, um, <laughs> I do have the one video where I did install, uh, or, I forget if I installed it in the video, but I at least used Movie Maker to, um, make an anime music video, which was an experience, because Windows Movie Maker is, um, kind of buggy, um, to say the least. But, so, yeah, that'll be fun to play around with eventually, um, and then Crystal Disk Info... Hardware Info is another um, program that does basically the same thing um, as CPU-Z, probably, yeah, with, with more detail, um, but, um, yeah, so that, and also Crystal Mark, which is from uh, Crystal Do World, like Crystal Disk Info, and basically what um, that is, is it is a benchmark that I can actually run from the USB flash drive, so in a moment I will do that. So yeah, this is pretty much all the same information that uh, CPU-Z can give, uh, Pentium 4, Northwood, 2400 MHz, motherboard is an Asus P4SC-E with um, this chipset. And the SIS315 integrated video adapter running on AGP4X bus with um, 32 megabytes of shared memory. And yeah, um, and then clicking around here, we can see like more information. This is actually an interface similar to the Macintosh system profiler, which I really enjoy just to show that we are indeed running at the native resolution of the monitor, um, 10, 1280 by 1024, right here. I've never used Crystal Mark Retro before, I just click all, and I think this is, yeah, um, and I suppose I will, um, come back when this is finished benchmarking. Like I said, I've never used this program before, so I don't know exactly, like, what it does <laughs> in comparison to, like, other uh, benchmarking programs that I have used. Okay, so, uh, the benchmarks are done. This couldn't run because it, um, uh, um, didn't have enough space. Yeah, I don't actually know the, um... like the scale, but, um, yeah, these are the benchmarks, uh, for 2D, CPU, it's the same score because there is no more than one core, um, and 3D, um, I watched this and it, uh, struggled a lot, which is to be expected of, of graphics chip of this caliber, um, I don't really have many games that I can actually play, a lot of these require installation, but one game that I know will play, is Toho. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> and 
around, this won't really be a stress test of, like, anything, because the graphics chip in here seems to be okay as a 2D chip. It just struggles with 3D stuff for the most part. Um, because, like, it, it can, it's been doing just fine, like, navigating, like, the UI, and, like, even the 2D graphics test weren't terrible. Um, it was when, like, you got into the 3D stuff that really struggled. Um, and now given, like, all, all of that was, like, 12A by 10.4 resolution, so it's possible that if I were to run a video game in, say, a uh, lower resolution, like 800 by 600, or, you know, even maybe 640 by 480, depending on the game, it would get better, uh, uh, performance. But yeah. I was playing this earlier just to test the um, uh, uh, sound and 2D graphics capabilities because I really like using this game as a test game, and yeah. I've definitely forgotten some of the bullet patterns because this is a game that I have not played a lot in a while. Oh, it's hard to play over the camera tripod. <laughs> some games that you can play on this other than Minesweeper. <laughs> Ooh. There are two things that no Windows XP video would ever be complete without. The first of which is Space Cadet Pinball. <laughs> I'm not great at pinball if you cannot tell. second thing that the, um, uh, that a Windows XP video would not be complete without is, um, of course, one stopped up in. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I will have one stop play us out. Um, and, yeah, um, this has been a really fun with. I look forward to playing around with this. Uh, sibling? Uh, whatever you want to call it, the AMD version. I'm gonna install a Red Hat Linux on it, probably. Um, eventually. But yeah. I do hope to get a bigger hard drive for this, uh, because I do want to, like... I sort of just want to see how much I... I can torture the um, integrated graphics. And then, if I can get a good PCI graphics card for this, it would make a really nice LAN party machine, I think. Because it's actually really lightweight. The computer itself is, does not weigh much at all. Um, and it's small, nice, easy to, like, transport and stuff. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and I will see you in the next video.